See, you need to care. Let's be clear about this. There are no two questions about this. And the reason is very simple. You and I are responsible for the stock of greenhouse gases in the air. So what does it mean? It means that we have emitted because of our consumption, our use of fossil fuels, we drive a car, we use an air conditioner, we live in a house which has heating, cooling, all these contribute to emissions of carbon dioxide, of other greenhouse gases. Now this forces the temperature to rise in the atmosphere. We are beginning to see more rain, more heat, more cyclones. Now all this leads to loss of property, okay? leads to damage. But more than that, it leads to the loss of livelihoods, leads to the loss of property of the poorest people in the world. And these are communities that are not responsible for the stock of greenhouse gases, which is leading to climate change. Growing up, um, I've seen, I've noticed that some of the beaches in Seychelles are eroding away. We're losing our most precious beaches and also our roads, our infrastructures as well as are, are being impacted by sea level rises. We often refer to climate finance as donations, but we as small island states, we see it as climate justice. We are impacted by your actions and your decisions. The use of fossil fuels in your country is what is happening to our country. We are facing the impacts. Young people in Seychelles are, are listening to the COP and understanding how impactful the loss and damage fund would be for us as a small nation. It guarantees and it gives us hope that maybe um, after disasters, after um, being stranded, feeling like we were unable to get back up, there's hope that we as a country can move past these disasters because at the end of the day these disasters are happening every year. We are going through this right now and we do not want the, our future generation to go through the same thing. Loss and damage has been discussed from the time the Framework Convention on Climate Change was signed. It's been a very contentious issue largely because the rich polluters of the world do not want to recognize their liability. When it comes to the rich, we do not discuss polluter pays. Then it's convenient to evade that question. It's a fight that many communities, many governments have fought. And it is good to know that at COP28, a fractured, divided world has come together to sign what is clearly a historic agreement on loss and damage. There is a question, the question you're asking about trust is very important and I'm not going to underestimate it. The fact is, the biggest problem we have in climate change today is the lack of trust between the governments of the North and the governments of the South. Loss and damage is one effort to try and repair that trust. There are many holes in it, and I can tell you the very word voluntary when it comes to payment for the funds is a fatal flaw in the agreement. But for the moment, I'm just asking you to hold your breath because this is too important a moment. This is a moment where governments need to rise above petty interests to say it is about the future of humankind. And let's be clear, like COVID, we cannot have a world which survives if the rich and the poor do not come together. So this is one of those moments of truth.